Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Essence Gurukul. In this video series, I share some of my learnings from books that I have read, general life experiences, languages that I have learned and so on, and try to share as much information that is useful for others in their daily life. So in this video, I'm going to summarize an excellent book I had read recently called Metabolical. Just to give you a background, I'm an engineer uh, and a manager, banker. It had nothing to do with health, fitness, biology and other topics. But I just happened to chance on this wonderful video by Dr. Robert Lustig in which he explained some of the key concepts in health and nutrition. And he referred to his book Metabolical. I read that book and was so fascinated by that book and the key insights from the book that I decided that I should make a video series to share some of these learnings with everyone because we all need it to be able to maintain a healthy lifestyle. I admire many doctors who do video series just for helping others and not for monetary reasons and Dr. Robert Lustig happens to be one of them. Uh, so, as a tribute to him, I share this video. Before we go into the details of Dr. Lustig's book, let me first summarize my understanding of the human body and cells. And then we can go into details of what Dr. Lustig talks about in his book. So, essentially, Dr. Lustig makes two big cases in his book. One, that among all the food that we take in, fructose is really the killer food. And fructose happens to be this artificial sugar that we seem to have created over the last 100 to 200 years, which has really led to many of the health issues that we are facing these days. That's one big point that for him, fructose is really the killer. Second big point he makes is that many of the diseases that we see right now, whether it is diabetes, heart diseases, blood pressure and so on, are really the outcome of dysfunctional intracellular processes, which we really need to understand. And so in this book, he summarizes the intracellular dysfunctions and connects them with issues that we have with our food and nutrition habits. Before we go into the details for people who are not from the medical background, I want to give a little overview of my understanding of how the human body and nutrition process works. So here we go. So as we all know, human cells require energy to function. And this energy is derived primarily from three macronutrients. So it's carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, jointly known as macronutrients. Apart from this, the body also needs several micronutrients such as minerals and vitamins, but I'm not covering those in this video. So our primary focus in this video is going to be on macronutrients, particularly carbohydrates, which is the main source of energy for us. Now the body breaks down carbohydrates into glucose, and uh, this glucose travels through the various cells. The body cells convert glucose into what is known as adenosine triphosphate, which is really the primary carrier of energy in our human cells. Glucose is converted to adenosine triphosphate through bacteria known as mitochondria. These mitochondria conduct something called Krebs cycle, which converts glucose, which is partly broken down into pyruvic acid, into ATPs. And the outcome of that process is also car carbon dioxide, which is then exhaled out. So this is the key function within our human cells that really gives us the energy to continue living. So that's the primary concept that we all need to understand. However, human cells cannot consume glucose on its own. Human cells can only open up for glucose when it is combined with 
a hormone called insulin and hence when we get food through our bloodstream usually it is already combined between glucose and insulin and kept ready for ingestion this process of combination of glucose and insulin is done upstream by the liver which converts carbohydrates into glucose and combines it with insulin that is created in the pancreas and then transmits that combination into the bloodstream so you can see the key function that the liver plays in um, giving the essential nutrients to the bloodstream for the human cells to consume now in turn the liver receives these nutrients from the stomach which simplifies breaks down the food and then sends out a bolus combined with several acids to make it easy for the liver to consume and process the food the liver would also purify some of the food to ensure that junk elements do not get into our bloodstream so the liver functions uh, on two different levels one is purification and second one is to some extent partial digestion of our food so with that basic understanding let's get down to uh, the various intracellular dysfunctions that dr lustig talks about the primary concept to remember here is this glucose plus insulin combination which is crucial for our human cells to receive glucose in in sufficient quantities for digestion now glucose should not be too less or too much but if the body starts receiving glucose in lesser quantity it also keeps an option available to consume what is called ketones and hence you would have heard this term called ketosis or ketogenic diet and so on so when you have lesser carbohydrate consumption you also have ketones as an option for energy but we'll come down to the concept of ketones later right now we'll just move on with the understanding that glucose is required in the right quantity for our human cells to have energy for survival so dr lustig says that all the diseases can be put down to eight intracellular dysfunctions the primary one of which is mitochondrial dysfunction so as we discussed earlier mitochondria are bacteria within our human cells that convert pyruvic acid into energy atp through the krebs cycle now if we overload these bacteria with too much of glucose through overeating the bacteria are unable to process this excess glucose and hence start malfunctioning so this would result in us always feeling hungry but not having the energy to survive which means we continue overeating all the more and become either overweight or have a high amount of glucose or sugar in our blood stream so one of the key health recommendations by dr lustig is to eat in moderate quantities so that we give only sufficient amount of glucose to the human cells if we give too much glucose one outcome is that the mitochondria begin to dysfunction but the other outcome is also that the excess glucose is converted into fatty acids and or triglycerides and are exported out to the liver cells these triglycerides in turn go back to the liver and get deposited on the liver which leads to a dysfunction called non alcoholic fatty liver disease this non alcoholic fatty liver disease also impacts the ability of the liver to process the incoming food and combine them with insulin and this would then lead to a vicious cycle where the liver is not giving sufficient glucose to the body the body feels hungry starts overeating but the glucose is just coming in in an unprocessed form and hence the blood stream continues to have a high amount of glucose this is essentially what diabetes is all about we'll talk about that in further detail in the next section so the next section or the next category of disease that dr lustig talks about is insulin resistance 
as we just said if the liver is not able to process the incoming insulin and carbohydrates to form the right combination of glucose and insulin it would lead to two types of diseases one that the pancreas stop producing insulin altogether because anyway the insulin is not being processed properly by the liver or the liver starts getting insensitive to the insulin that is produced by the pancreas so the first symptom which is the pancreas not even creating enough insulin is called type 1 diabetes and the second one which is the liver not even processing the insulin that is available is called type 2 diabetes and as we all know once we have diabetes the insulin plus glucose combination is not absorbed by the human cell and hence we don't have enough energy for the cells to grow this is one of the reasons diabetes patients rapidly lose weight because the cells are not able to reproduce with the right amount of energy so one of his recommendations again is to make sure that we don't overeat and hence we don't overload this system which produces glucose and insulin the third dysfunction that dr lustig talks about is what is called glycation or maillard reaction as we discussed earlier the body requires carbohydrates and proteins to be able to produce energy however one of the natural outcomes of survival of the human body is that these carbohydrates and proteins interact and inevitably this leads to browning or degradation of the proteins this cannot be avoided but it can be slowed down now here is why dr lustig first introduces the harmful effect of glucose as you all know carbohydrates are primarily of two types glucose and fructose glucose are prime are more or less natural substances available in fruits vegetables and so on but fructose is primarily coming from processed foods we'll we'll talk about a small history of how fructose became so prevalent in our food uh, later on perhaps in a different video but right now you can just take it that we consume a significant amount of fructose in our food these days now coming back to glycation or maillard reaction this natural combination of carbohydrates and proteins happen in a gradual speed when we have normal carbohydrates but when we start having carbohydrates in the form of fructose these carbohydrates tend to degrade the proteins 15 times as faster as as fast as the glucose and hence this naturally leads to our proteins getting degraded 15 times faster and hence essentially speaking we are accelerating our own aging so this is a huge dysfunction caused by fructose the fourth dysfunction is oxidative stress oxygen is crucial for our survival but too much oxygen also leads to an excess of oxygen radicals in our cells these oxygen radicals in turn burn away the necessary components of our human cells the body has a natural mechanism called peroxisome which controls the oxygen radicals but if the oxygen radicals are overloaded in the human cells even the peroxisome cannot function properly to to balance the oxygen radicals so one of the recommendations from dr lustig is to have a lot of natural foods which have color so that uh this also indicates uh the food having sufficient antioxidants so we should have a lot of uh, green vegetables for example for getting enough antioxidants to control the oxygen radicals the next dysfunction he talks about is membrane integrity lipids essentially getting damaged so as we all know the human cells have membranes which contain the crucial components of the human cell now these get damaged over a period of time and again here fructose plays a crucial role fructose can lead to excess fat cells 
these fat cells in turn put pressure on the outer covering of the human cells and lead to membrane disintegration if this membrane gets disintegrated you can imagine that all of these components of the human cell go out into the rest of the body and in turn cause what is called inflammation which is the next dysfunction we'll talk about so inflammation when you have unwanted components in the human cell the body cells naturally react to act on those unwanted cells and this results in inflammation inflammation is like war you will have collateral damage as well on even necessary components of the human cell and so naturally we should avoid this excess fat which results in membrane disintegrity which in turn results in inflammation so we should not cause this internal war in our human cells which are essentially a result of fat cells in our body especially around the abdominal area the next dysfunction dr lustig talks about is epigenetics now epigenetics is nothing but the modification of gene functions to be able to adapt to the external environment and uh, the external environment changes that we are primarily imposing on the human body these days is processed foods when we have too much processed foods the body does not know how to react to it and hence changes its gene functions which in turn leads to long term damage to the human cells so we should avoid processed foods as far as pos possible the body naturally has a mechanism called autophagy which i found the most fascinating among all of these dysfunctions autophagy is actually a positive function of the human cell which is essentially helping us process some of these damaged components of the cell and convert them into useful components primarily in a in an area called vacuole so the human cell has some empty areas which it has reserved for taking in some of these damaged components and essentially processing them into useful components that can be sent back to the human cell this wonderful function called autophagy is one of the reasons why damaged cells don't go in and cause damage to further human cells and get converted into useful components in fact um, uh, a famous doctor got his nobel prize recently in a, a few years ago for his description of the autophagy process now autophagy is a natural process within our human cells in remaining parts of the body but our brain cells are not able to conduct autophagy instead the brain cells work in a different mechanism where the brain cells would just eject the unwanted components outside of the brain cells and during the process of sleeping certain chemical reactions happen which take out those unwanted components so for healthy autophagy of the brain and the human cells it is very important for us to have a very good sleep every night so i hope i have given you a good overview of the the various dysfunctions that are explained in the book metabolical by dr robert lustig i hope you can read the book and watch some of his fascinating videos feel glück which is essentially german for best of luck to maintain a healthy human body and spirit thank you